People really think Sparking Zero looks like Kakarot, but PvP version. I've seen discourse that say Sparking Zero is the PvP version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Because I've played Kakarot, and we can clearly see Sparking Zero, and we've played the prequel to Sparking Zero BT3, I believe I can speak on this idea floating around and dismantle it. First off, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is an action RPG. Having played a few RPG and action RPG games, I believe the premise of these particular games is dependent on their stats, timing, level up system, as well as you using the combat to take down your opponent. As an example, let's look at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Its combat revolves around what's that? Stats, timing of attacks, and being able to use the core combat system they have in that game to be effective in battle. As you get better at the combat system and knowing how to use it against enemies, you become more effective in battles, finishing them off faster versus slower and dragged out. With Sparking Zero being an arena fighter, its core gameplay doesn't revolve around stats, no. In fact, stats don't play a major role like it does in an RPG. Now, while combat is real-time in an arena fighter, combat and sparking is dependent more so on the movement, the defense maneuvers, and the offense. So, like the RPG, yes, the combat system is going to play a role. But how you use that combat system is completely different. When you're playing a PvP based game, while it is common for you to read your opponents in order to counter them, what is not common in action RPGs usually is that because you're playing against a real person, their strategies can change, so you have to constantly read your opponent in order to counter them while also mixing up your actions so that you're not predictable. It's more so a ever in, never ending mind game while an RPG, more so an action RPG, revolves around reading an opponent countering them and then effectively exploiting that on all enemy types going forward and that's that so essentially action rpgs more so rpgs it's about repetition enemies become predictable thus you get better at attacking them if you understand the combat system you can use that to your advantage to dispatch these enemies faster but even if you have a good grasp on the combat system for a fighting game it's not going to help you if the person that you're fighting in this fighting game is also really good at the same skills as you fighting someone on a comparable level to you it doesn't automatically become easy just because you know the combat system so essentially the game flow for an action rpg would be to read your opponent find a weak spot exploit it repeat fighting games are constantly about reading the opponent mixing up actions to become unpredictable finding an opening taking advantage of that opening and then your opponent would naturally respond and adapt to that eventually and you have to find a new opening so it's it's like playing chess it's it's a mind game so to think Kakarot plays like Spark and Zero, you would have to objectively point out that both games rely on the same gameplay loop. Kakarot, especially the bosses, are scripted fights that follow the same pattern. You replay the game, you play that spot, it's the same pattern for certain spots. But for the most part, once you know how to counter the attacks that they're going to do, it becomes easy. The hardest thing about action RPGs is when you initially fight that opponent and you don't know what they're capable of doing. You figure out the pattern, you exploit it. Once you study the enemy, you'll be able to counter them. Kakarot, like other RPGs, use stats and levels to balance itself. If you have a high level, you're typically strong in a lot of RPGs as well as stats are high. But if they're low, even if you're a high level, or if you have a low level, you're going to be weaker. Pokemon, as a example, when you're a lower level, you're typically weaker. But if you 
train your Pokemon, have really good stats, you might be, say, 5 to 10 levels under a Pokemon you're fighting and you still have an advantage over them. And then there's other elements to take in consideration with RPGs, like type advantages, type disadvantages. Again, it's a resource game when it comes to RPGs. Now, Kakarot is no different. But then, Kakarot also has a limited basic combat strings. It has limited counters. And again, it becomes a game of resources, more so than a game about pure fighting. Sparking Zero and previous Sparking games are simulators for the Dragon Ball anime. Its purpose is to emulate as close as possible as to what the anime fighting would be like. Its gameplay does not revolve around stats and it has much less resources to keep track of. Aside from the energy bar, the blast stock, now the skill count, and your health, you're not really keeping track of a lot of resources when you're playing a fighting game. Fighting games don't just rely on timing, they rely on the ability to read your opponent and knowing how to respond to the actions. Again, having a good grasp on the mechanics in the game can make you a good player, but if you don't know how to read your opponent and respond to what they're doing, you still suck at the game. So similar sure but they're different dragon ball is a shonen battle manga and because of this a lot of the games that you're going to play for dragon ball will always come down to it's a fighting game if you play an rpg they're fighting if you play a racing game they're somehow fighting so basically what i'm getting at is is saying that kakarot plays like Sparking Zero is like complaining that Spider-Man PS4 plays similar to Spider-Man 2 back on the PS2, you know the one at Treyarch Me, Fire Game, but they're different games, they have a different presentation, but they use the same IP. So, one would say they're the same game, right? But no, they, they obviously can tell the difference. So, because it's a presentation opinion both these games use a third person camera it's dragon ball they have energy attacks fast movement is shown it's honestly pointless to make a comparison to an action rpg to a fighting game and making such a claim means a couple things or it could just be one of these things you either don't play fighting games so you don't understand the intricate complicated processes that follow pursuit with these type of games you don't understand the sparking games and that's why someone will make a claim like this or you're just speaking out your ass because you want attention basically this is my opinion on if people really think sparking zero looks like Kakarot or is Kakarot but the PvP version I think it's an incredibly disingenuous conversation to even throw that out there but that's just me what do you guys ultimately think like this I'm sure there's going to be some people that think this but if you're really going to say it be prepared to counter what exactly I said in regards to what Kakarot is and what Sparking Zero or just the fighting games as a whole for the Sparking Zero series is. I'm Akai. I'll catch you guys in the next one.